So this lecture slash ramble by Lindsay um, is going to have some of the more um, some of like the specifications and things you need to keep in mind as you design these three deliverables um, for you. And then I have a few more just different visual examples. I know we looked at some on Monday, I think. Um, these are some different examples for these three specific pieces to also give you some more ideas and inspiration. So without further ado, here we go. Fun transition today. Okay, so letterhead is where I started. Okay, so when we're talking about letterhead, you're talking about an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, since that is letter sized paper here in America. If you were working for a company who worked in Europe, you would be designing A4 paper because that is their standard size paper. Um, so letterhead is traditionally one sided the logo is going to appear somewhere on your letterhead. The letterhead may or may not also include just like the general business contact information, like think like if there was an office phone number, a website, um, it could have the address. Definitely put on whatever is relevant for your organization. Um, if you're not really sure if nothing else I would think you would have the logo and probably a website um, so the back side of your letterhead can be just blank or it could be a full bleed of artwork um, and you can definitely consider printing on nicer paper stock if you'd like traditionally letterhead is pre-printed and like it would be on a slightly nicer paper think like resume paper um, but nowadays with everything being so digital there are I definitely know like smaller companies who don't actually pre-print letterhead they just have a basically a word template that is their letterhead and then they print on demand okay so here are just some different fancy okay so the front of the letterhead just some different ideas you can include you know a little bit of graphics in the corners if you would like obviously if you're going to have art that bleeds to the edges you're going to have to have this printed on like 11 by 17 and then trimmed down which means you're not going to be able to print it on demand at your home printer right because if you wanted to be able to print something just out in the office on demand on an eight and a half by 11 you need to have like a quarter inch uh, white all the way around a quarter inch white border because the printer machine needs to be able to grip the paper so just keep that in mind with these first two examples I think a lot of people just naturally assume that you should have a giant watermark of your logo on the front of your letterhead it's obviously a little tacky and plus the more watermarked stuff you throw in the front the harder it is to read the actual letter that is going to go on the paper which is the whole point of paper is to be able to communicate some information via letter so I this middle example definitely has a bit of like a watermark or like a knocked out image behind um, and I think this is a more like successful example of how you could do that since it's just in the corners it's not really going to be inhibiting the reading of the letter that will be printed on here um, and then the last example is the most uh, plain we'll say but it definitely still has a certain um, it's definitely communicating something about Ashley Becker as a business right clean sophisticated straightforward still a little stylish so again doesn't have to be crazy like the middle one but it can be it can be somewhere in between um, also take a look at just sort of the basic information that are on these three letterheads they all have a different amount of information and information placed in slightly different spots so there is a bit of flexibility within your design just as long as the center of the letter is blank for a letter to be printed there and we looked at like fun backs last time so I don't have any fun backs but put on a fun back if you want okay so envelopes Okay, so there are many different sizes of envelopes. There are envelopes for many different purposes. For business, your you know, 
basic bread and butter envelope is going to be a commercial envelope, which is the size, the type I've boxed out here. And again, you can see envelopes come in um, numbers. That's how they're discussed. Um, so there are many different sizes of envelopes again, but your number 10 business envelope is going to be your standard envelope. You're going to be able to print out a piece of letter size paper, fold it into thirds and put it into this envelope and put it in the mail, right? So your standard envelope that you get your bills in right in the mail, um, that's a number 10. So that's the dimension. You're going to make your envelopes four and an eighth by nine and a half inches which is the number 10 envelope size. Um, when you're designing it, you can definitely go online and grab one of these outlined envelopes, or you can just make one yourself. It's basically a rectangle, right? So however you want to do it, that is the size of the envelope that we're going to work off of. Um, since I know you guys are trying to do this for a more practical application, there are some very specific printing rules around envelope design so that it can be sent through the first class mail. Um, this is a template. You can find these again on Google Images pretty easily. However, it's um, a pretty, there's not a lot to it. So this is the front side of the envelope, the side that you would put the address on and the stamp. So most companies, smaller companies, are going to buy pre-made envelopes and then have their information printed on the envelope. Larger companies can have envelopes custom made for them. So if you would like to design your envelope with the assumption that it's going to be a custom made envelope, by all means go for it. If you are trying to design more feasible things for your actual business um, an organization, I would try to design around the idea of a pre -print, of printing on a pre-made envelope. So if you're printing on a pre-made envelope, you need at least a 16th inch clearance all the way around the edges of the envelope, again, so that the printing machine can grip the envelope as it goes through. Your, either way, your return address should be a quarter inch from the top and left side of the envelope. It could be a little bit more, but you need at least a quarter inch margin. And of course, the return address has to be in the upper left side of the envelope. The upper right hand side is where the stamp would go or an indicia. An indicia is when you ever get um, envelopes in the mail and instead of a, a, like a sticker stamp, it is more of like a ink stamp stamp or printed ink on envelope paper stamp. Um, that is an indicia. Um, an indicia is at least a half inch by half inch in size. It can be larger. Um, the designer does set the size of the indicia. Indicia is like, it's like a special stamp that a company gets from the post office that has like their account number on it basically. And as they use it, the post office, as they post office scans the envelopes to be distributed via the mail, it charges back that company with their special stamp number. Um, and then obviously the address goes somewhere across the middle of your envelope. And then if you've probably noticed that usually stuff that comes into your mailbox has a barcode printed on the lower right hand corner. So you need to leave a barcode clear zone, which is, I would say, about an inch tall by four and three quarters inches wide. So um, just because the barcode has to be able to be printed and then scanned, so it needs maximum contrast, so you don't want to have ink in that area or it will inhibit the barcode scanning machines from being able to read the barcode and get your mail delivered successfully. Um, and it says the note is no more than 7% ink coverage. That means like if you wanted to have like an overall wash of pink or gray or blue, um, you know, like when you're looking at the CMYK tint, the all those numbers can't add up to more than seven. So you could have like zero cyan, zero magenta, zero yellow, and seven black. 
that would be a 7% ink coverage, or you could have like one cyan, two magenta, and four yellow and no black, and that would still be seven, right? Okay, so that's what 7% ink coverage means. So these are the rules for the front of the envelope. There are no specific rules for the back of the envelope, but of course, if you're gonna use pre-made envelopes, you still have that 16 inch clearance, clearance issue. And you should know that the envelopes are printed with the um, flaps down. So if you were gonna do like a color wash on the back or like messaging, just be aware that that's how they are physically printed. Okay, so when you're talking about the back of the envelope too, you can buy envelopes with many different flap styles. So here are a bunch of different flap styles. Um, not every style of flap is available for every type of envelope, but I have starred the five that are still pretty common within a commercial number 10 envelope. So again, you can kind of see it's just about how the envelope it's physically folded. Um, all of these would work as a number 10 envelope. It's a stylistic issue at that point for as the designer, you get to pick what type of flap you think best would work for your, for your client, or in this case for yourselves. So you can definitely use any size flap in your designs. If you feel like considering a flap design, if you don't, at least now you know, these are your flap options and these are what they're called. <laughs> okay, so here are some different envelopes that I found that are kind of fun. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting to show you guys the um, Telesso envelope. You can see how there's like more ink coverage on the left and then less ink coverage as you move to the bottom right hand corner where that barcode would be. So I thought that was sort of a clever way to have a really nice design on your envelope, but still account for the very technical issues of envelope mailing. So that was cool. Um, the one below that one for the yellow strip and the anchor, I thought that was like a very nice design that you could definitely still achieve with not having a bleed, but having that margin of white, I think it would still look really nice and you would still get the point across. Um, and you can see sort of that one was a photograph of an envelope. So you can see like how big the stamp is versus like their address label versus the company logo to sort of kind of understand um, sizing in real life. Um, then that red cedar, again, where they have that red magenta strip, but it definitely ends at a very strategic point to allow room for the barcode. Um, and you can see how if you are going to design an envelope that has design on the front and on the back to consider the flap, right? So if the flap is up, you can see how that red carries across and the one continuous arc, but then also be sure to take that strip of flap and put it on the back of your envelope design, rotate it 180 degrees to see how that's gonna look because then you'll notice that the angle of the swoop is going in a different direction than maybe the rest of your artwork if you have artwork on the back side too. So that is a friendly tip. Um, be sure to consider how the flap artwork looks both like this with the flap up looking at the front of your envelope and with the flap down looking at the back of your envelope if you're gonna have artwork on both sides. Um, and also putting the logo on the center of the flap back is like a very traditional classic artwork for imprinting on the back of the envelope if you just want a little something. Um, and then that top right-hand corner example, again, I thought that was really nice. I kind of liked how they included their return address on the back of the envelope, but I kind of feel like that is, I don't know if you could actually mail something like that. I'm guessing you could, but I 
I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, but I do like also on the front how they kind of got a, out around the ink coverage problem is they have a white square or a light a lighter square where they are going to have the addresses printed on the envelopes and if you have an automated printing machine you can print the barcodes directly in that area to avoid having to have the barcode section cleared but you could do something similar to that and just have the square be a little bit bigger to account for the barcode too those envelopes look like they might not really go in through the mail though looking at them but anyway again nice design okay so then your business cards hope i don't know i said like if you guys have business cards lying around gather them look at them um definitely i feel like it's always nice to look at actual physically printed things um it helps you get a better sense of scale. So as you're designing any of this stuff, if you have a printer at home that works, even if it's just printing black ink, um, it's really helpful to print stuff out to scale to really get a sense of if you like the proportions of it in real life, especially since these three things are things that are physically printed and handled versus the digital applications. For some reason, things always look different um, printed out versus on the screen. So business cards, um, standard business card size is three and a half by two inches, but, and you can make them horizontally or vertically oriented. Um, but you can actually make your business cards any size you want. Obviously, if you make them a custom size, they are going to cost you more to have printed. Um, if you go to like Vista print or Moo, which are two of the bigger print on demand sites um, that definitely do business cards. You can see they also have like a square option that's like a two by two card. Um, and you can do like hard corners, soft corners. They're probably the most economical places to print business cards if you're looking to actually have business cards produced. You can also see what paper stocks they have available and even request a free um, paper kit if you're interested, which I would have brought to class and shown you had we been physically in class. <laughs> so you can ask, request your own set if you'd like. Um, your text on your business cards are going to be small. So regular body copy text, like text you see like in a book um, or in a magazine or in any kind of like corporate communications is usually around a 10 point size. So business card text is probably going to be somewhere between like 11 and four points. Typically, you don't usually set text below like five or six points, but on a business card, depending on the font you're using, you might even have to push that to like four, four and a half points. Make sure, again, that's why you have to print stuff out to make sure it's really legible 100% when printed. Remember, whoever you're giving these cards to, if your audience is going to be, you know, middle-aged to older people, they cannot read small type. So you don't want to go that small. You want to stick to the like seven, eight point range at the smallest. And you want to make sure there's a good contrast of color so they can read your information. If that's who you need to be able to distribute business cards of information to you don't care or you're dealing with mostly younger people by all means stretch the readability factor make it smaller type if you need to make their you know have there be less contrast um, younger people have much better eyesight all right um, what should you put on your cards you should definitely have your logo and or your company name you should have your name um, or a spot for your employees names um, the employee job titles. You're going to have the company website and any um, personal employee contact details like email, phone numbers, address, um, and then you might want to have corporate or personal social handles. Um, business cards are pretty flexible for as you can have a lot of information, not so much information. It kind of depends on the company and their needs. Um, your business cards can be one sided or two. I would recommend them be two-sided because it really costs almost 
the same, whether you have one side or two sides, and I think two sided cards just feel a little more professional. Um, your business cards are really where you're making your first impression, and it's making a strong impression since people tend to keep business cards that they've acquired, and business cards are pretty cost effective. So, you know, you can definitely include more high end finishes or quality papers um, in your business cards where you might not have that sort of budget to be able to do that for other types of communications. So, you know, spend usually companies spend a little more money on their business cards and make something that really makes a nice impression. So when you're doing these, you can definitely think about using um, different types of paper, whether it's like textures, colors, um, glossy, matte, there's a lot of cool papers out there. I wish we were together and I would bring in some samples for you to touch and feel. Um, but if you have touched and felt anything really nice paper-wise, pretty much the sky's the limit. Um, and then you can also think about some of those cool printing techniques like embossing or debossing, foil stamping, um, where you, again, you have a more tactile feel to your card if that goes with your company's ca attributes and characteristics that you're trying to convey to your target audience. So let's look at some business cards. Okay. I pull these cards because I feel like they all have different amount of information and they're kind of all serving slightly different purposes. So again, you have to think about what is the purpose of your business cards? Who would you be making business cards for? What would these people be doing with their business cards? Who would they be giving their business cards out to? And that would probably help you understand what type of information you should be including on your business cards. So the first one, the top left is for Tora, which is a sushi, res sushi restaurant. Um, again, you can see it's a two-sided card. The back is the right-hand side of that card where it's, you know, just really has the logo. It's more um, giving you a vibe of the restaurant. And then the front side has the actual information. So it has a different version of their logo. It has their website, their social handle, and it has their location and their phone number. So obviously if this is a restaurant, you're not making cards for specific employees, you're just making a general card to hand out. So that is one way you could do business cards. Everyone gets the same cards. I would even say like on that design, there is room for someone to write in on pen, you know, my name's Lindsay and this is my personal email address. If I needed to give a card to somebody, like, you know, if I own the restaurant, and I needed to like give a vendor my personal contact information. But these are cards more to give out to the general public to be like, hey, you ate here, don't forget us, tell a friend, right? All right, so then you've got those WB cards. Again, they're two-sided, but they're very simple. I have a feeling they're on like nice tactile paper stock just based on if you squint really hard at the screen, you can kind of see a texture on those, on those white cards. Um, again, the logo's on the back. The front has a smaller logo you have and if you kind of look at some of these there's different amounts of information which is really common on business cards because some people are going to include like a telephone and fax or a office phone and a mobile phone and a fax or you know different amounts of information so usually business cards are pretty flexible in their design um, and this wb business card is like a very common way to do it where you have the um, person's name and title on like the top kind of top aligned to that text box and then you have all the contact information kind of tucked to the bottom and bottom aligned so as you add more information the it grows up the card closer and closer to the person's title but definitely accounting for the maximum amount of fields that someone could fill in that they want on their card to not bump the title so that is a really common design you can see how you have um, an email address you have 
different amounts of telephones and or fax numbers. You have a physical address. You have the company website. And um, to the right under the logo, it's a telling you it's like a division of the larger Warner Brothers company. But you could always have like uh, social handles across from the URL too, if you want it. So like this card definitely accounts for as much information as could possibly be needed. So that is like a very corporate design. Um, the one directly under it, that Studio Iconic product design, again, you can kind of see the logo is on the back, the logo is on the front, um, the full logo, I guess, is on the front, and then just another sort of layout where this time the logo is a little bit bigger on the front and the contact information is on the right. But you can see how, again, it's been set in such a way to account for a couple different phone numbers, an address, and a couple different social places to add at the bottom where they have like a Behance portfolio link because it's a um, creative studio. So that would make sense. Again, so you're having content, content that makes sense for that company. And I like how they use a couple different, two different typefaces on that one. Makes it a little bit different. Um, there's also no standard to setting phone numbers. You can see that they're kind of done different ways on these cards. Hyphens are your like standard way to do a phone number. Um, you can, a lot of designers like periods, uh, or you can just have spaces like you can see here. If you have um, international clientele uh, in America, we are plus one as our international code. That's why this Odin Quest has a plus one before his phone number. Um, again, unnecessary, but but I guess if you have international clientele and you want to include your country code, ours is plus one. Um, and then the last cards are the super trash on the left bottom. So that one, the backs have more just like a fun design that is part of their corporate identity. I have some more stuff from them uh, in a couple slides from now, which are super fun. So again, that's just like a fun design, catches your attention, just giving the visual identity to the back of the card. And then the front of the card has the logo. It has somebody's name. That one has probably the least amount of information. Um, and it's typeset in another different kind of way. But again, you can sort of see what kind of information is there and again, how it's been set. And they have their little company tagline. Um, at the bottom of those cards saying turning trash around so again if you had a tagline or anything like that you could definitely include that on your cards as well okay so those are business cards again all these cards are probably set in like eight or nine point type um could be all the way down to like seven um especially for like some of that wb stuff usually the person's name would be the largest or the most prominent, right? Like super trash, it's in pink. WB, it's the largest thing on the page. Studio Iconic, it's bold and probably the largest typeface there. Um, usually the rest of the contact information, the phone numbers, the address, that stuff is secondary to the person and their title, hierarchically. All right, so like I said before, you can definitely um, spec out some cool finishes for your business cards if you want, like gold foil, like you can see on that one example. Um, they've got gold foil on the front and back, makes it look extra classy. Um, the other black card, you can have black paper. Um, that's white ink printed on black paper, which can totally be done digitally and it's not as expensive or hard to find someone who can do that as it used to be. Um, and then that black and carrot thing is probably uh, a clear, um, oh, I just totally forgot the title of how the type of finish that is. It's clear ink. I can't remember what the name of it's called, <laughs> but um, clear ink printed on a black card. 
The other lighter gray stock is just um, light gray stock, which stock means paper, um, with black ink. So that's really a one color example, but it just has like a very sp specific aesthetic and like vibe going for it with like a very simple production, black ink, gray paper. That's all it is, like a cool design. Um, I also like how they use those thin rules on that design to help separate out the information, sort of a different way to approach it. Um, and then there's that trit, those trick cards. Those cards, the logo has been um, embossed, so like pushed up on the front of the paper. So then you can see how on the back, now the back contact information is actually going to be like pushed in, <laughs> like down. Um, to accommodate for the trit that I don't know if those are real cards or not because I feel like that would be a printer would really hate to do that because they'd have to print the back of the card first and then push the trit out and you would might crack the ink so I think that's like a fun idea to talk about embossing and debossing but I would try to avoid putting ink over the push so like maybe have that trip not be so big or just be on like the top half of your card and then you can have the ink stuff on the lower half of the card would be a workaround for that. Okay, so then I just have a few, those four examples of business cards, I have their full visual identities. Just to again, show you a few more examples of how this all gets pulled together. So. WB, this is like just a little collage of corporate communication stuff, right? Letterhead, a folder. Um, the tube is showing you what a sticker looks like. Um, envelope, then they've got some premium items like pens and buttons and a little like uh, flip notebook. So again, you can see how we're using, obviously their colors are blue and white you can see how there is a direct visual relationship between that business card design that we looked at a little bit bigger and the letterhead and the envelope, right? We're using the same fonts, the same colors. Um, you're using like the way they've done the bold T and then the phone number is the same between the business card and the letterhead. The way they've laid out the address is the same between the business card and the envelope back. So those little details are what makes your design look professional and also is what's making a corporate identity or a visual identity. There's certain style that you're putting on all of your pieces that is consistent and it goes down to the nuances of how you're typesetting phone numbers and web addresses, okay? Fonts, sizes, style right if you're going to use periods between your phone number numbers do it everywhere that kind of that kind of stuff okay this is super trash i just think this is so fun neon pink for a trash company um, but again you can see they've done their truck that same um i don't know zigzag starburst thing that's on their business card is cropped in a different way onto their truck so that is part of their visual identity and they're repeating that design in a few different places, but they're cropping it in different ways, making it you know big versus small, and it kind of makes it um, look unique, but similar, right? And then they have like some, those look like postcards maybe, or folders. Again, it's all neon pink, black and white, but it looks cohesive. Okay, you got their t-shirt and then like, it sounds stupid, but like there was a designer or a branding agency that was like, hey, Super Trash, make sure you also get neon pink safety vests for your trash guys instead of just the standard yellow ones. Because again, that's reinforcing their brand. Their brand color is neon pink. Everything you could possibly get in neon pink, you would get. So as a designer, you can definitely spec all that kind of stuff. And again, it just makes your presentation look that much more pulled together. 
here's that sushi restaurant. Um, I like how you, they have the napkin and the chopstick wrapper, how it's similar but different once again. And you can see how they're using the same photograph on the chopstick wrapper and the bag and probably the business card. They're all just different amounts of zoomed in or cropped in different ways um, to give it, you know, each one is scaled appropriately for its deliverable and each one looks unique but unified. Um, and then you can see that same image is being used in the restaurant on that little picture of the sushi bar. I don't know if those are tablets or what, but again, they're using the same photograph. They're using the same lockup which with the Tora Sushi logo and um, looks like on those tablets there might be like some additional information. It's typeset underneath the logo. So it all looks very uniformed. And then the last slide I have is for this trit. Again, you can see uh, one thing we didn't talk about yet is when you're doing business cards, you could definitely do like um, a series and the same thing for the uh, letterhead. If you want to have like a full bleed color back to your letterhead, it's pretty common to have like, we're going to have, you know, three different colors on the backs or six colors or whatever your brand colors are um, so that you have a bit of a variety for people, but it's still again, unified. Um, same thing with like business cards. We're going to do business cards printed on colored paper. We're going to get, you know, two or three different colored stocks and print all of our business cards on those. Um, or if you were going to just have like the super trash, that pink on design on the back, if you have like a couple different colors or designs within your visual identity and you want to swap those out on the backs to make a series in your business cards, again, very common. You can totally do that too. Um, and you would just spec it out like this. Um, I like how they have their bags are in the same color, right? And then there's like a little collage of other printed collateral that they've made. Um, and again, you can just see that we're using the same typefaces, the same general styling of how text is handled, um, that kind of stuff. Um, so all of that reinforces your visual identity and lends a certain characteristic to your brand. So hopefully that helped bring some specifics to what we're doing. Um, you can definitely like scroll back through here and get the specific sizes that you need. Or honestly, you could just Google any of these things and sizes and Google will tell you what you need to know. Um, but anyway, I would start with one of these three items, do up a few different designs, start designing um, or generating different visual identity pieces. Um, again, you could have photography, you could have illustration, you could have graphics, you could have patterns, you could have a little bit of all three. It's really up to you what you want to include um, and how you want to utilize it on your different materials that you're going to produce for your visual identities. So see what you can kind of come up with this weekend and we'll talk about it on Monday and see where we are.